For this micro lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the physical and chemical properties of soils uh, that are important to know in the context of forest soils. And to put us in that context, uh, we're going to define uh, forest soils, which are uh, you know the part of the earth that serves as a medium for vegetation. Um, forest soils are unique in that uh, most of their physical and chemical properties uh, derive from the types of trees and the types of tree species that are uh, that uh, grow on the soil and that decompose when they when they die, uh, and the you know very different biological action of the tree roots and forest litter and the impact that that has on uh, the particular soil ecology of the area uh, immediately under a forest. Um, soil is a very important player in the global carbon cycle as it's the, the area where uh, a lot of uh, carbon, gases, water, nutrients, uh, all these elements are stored. Uh, your carbon, which is produced uh, by photosynthesis, uh, along with oxygen, of course, um, goes back into the atmosphere through uh, respiration and into the soil when plants and animals uh, die and begin to, to decay. Soil texture is one of the major physical properties that uh, that has an effect on other soil properties as well. Um, soil texture is basically the proportion of uh, sand, silt, and clay, which are three different sizes of, of soil particles. Sand, of course, being the uh, being the largest particle, then silt, uh, then clay, and it has a lot. To, and the the size of the particles in the in soil texture um, has to do with with how uh, permeable the soil is, how easily soils. Um, are able to hold nutrients, um, how, uh, uh, how water percolates through the soil and how susceptible a soil is for uh, erosion or leaching and other, and other processes. So soil texture is a very important um, soil property to, uh, to understand and just know that, it, that it's really just a, a proportion or a percentage of sand, silt, and clay that's, that exists in the particular soil. <coughs> Uh, in regards to nutrient cycling within forest soils, litter fall, or the, you know, trees and branches and other dead or dying material that, that end up on the forest floor, is the major source of nutrient turn return to the forest floor. And there are a number of uh, microorganisms that take advantage of this uh, of this food source. These slides, of course, you know, earthworms. The slide on the left uh, um, are major um, uh, decomposer or consumer of detritus. Uh, the little picture on the right shows a number of, of uh, different types of mites or arthropods that exist in the soil and that and that break down um, decaying material. Uh, a few of the major chemical soil properties, pH is the alkalinity or acidity of soil. Many of you are familiar with this term from, from high school chemistry. Um, a pH of 7 is considered neutral. Uh, anything below 7 is considered acidic. and Anything above 7 is considered alkaline. Um, uh, normal soils, kind of like, kind of like water, are are typically in the uh, hover near the neutral range or, or around seven, anywhere from 6.5 to seven. When you have soils um, that sit over beds of limestone, that soil pH can be a little higher than that. Uh, for the most part, here in western North Carolina, we have relatively acidic soils. Um, Cation exchange capacity, which is also called CEC, is another important uh, chemical soil property, and that's the ability of the soil to hold and exchange plant nutrients. Um, the analogy that's that's typically used to describe CEC is uh, is a truck or a dump truck. The uh, higher the cation exchange capacity the soil has, is the bigger the dump truck full of nutrients. If you consider, a, if you look, think of CEC as a number representing a, a uh, a large or small dump truck that's full of fertilizer. Uh, if you have a, a, a big dump truck uh, full of fertilizer, your soil has a high CEC and it's able to hold uh, a lot of nutrients. Typically clay soils have a uh, higher CEC because the particles are smaller and have more points that nutrients, uh, the, the ion nutrient, the cations can attach to in a soil. Sandy soils typically have a lower CEC, so you could compare uh, 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 a clay soil to a sandy soil with the analogy of a big dump truck for a clay soil and a small pickup truck for sandy soil, if that makes, uh, if that makes some sense. In, uh, in mineral soils, in other words, soils that have, uh, have been decomposed or that don't have a lot of organic material growing on them, most plants grow well in that 6 to 7 pH range. Um, here in the mountains, especially in western North Carolina, we have uh, much more organic soils. 
um, the crops and the and the trees in the in these areas like uh, a, a more acidic pH range. Uh, species such as blueberries, um, azaleas, your evergreens like Fraser fir uh, are have adapted to um, low pH uh, low pH soils. Uh, it's important to know some of the macronutrients and micronutrients that uh, that exist in the soil for plant utilization and tree utilization. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are by far the three uh, most important of the macronutrients. Uh, when you purchase fertilizer and you know you purchase triple 13, well those numbers that, that 13, 13, 13 represent the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in that bag of fertilizer. Um, but you also have other macronutrients such as calcium, magnesium, and sulfur that play a role. And some of the micronutrients include iron, manganese, boron, uh, copper, and zinc. And while these nutrients are necessary, they're not necessary for plant growth. They're not as, as, uh, uh, as prevalent or found in high percentages in, uh, in most soils. There's four major soil types that, that play a role in forest production in the United States. Uh, I mean, there's, there's 12 major soil orders, or so, these soil types, but, but these four, uh, I guess, contain the most, uh, uh, the most percentage, or the greatest percentage of uh, forests in the U.S. And those are the ultasols, the alphasols, the spodosols, and the oxisols. And you're welcome to pause the presentation through any of this to uh, to to get some of these details. Um, ultasols you find uh, very much in the eastern part of the U.S. Um, they're very weathered, very highly weathered, strongly leached. The Appalachian mountain chains are uh, are a very old, uh, very old mountain chain, very weathered uh, mountain chain, and thus. Uh, um, a lot of the soils that you find are, are very weathered and strongly leached. Uh, there's not a lot of native fertility. However, um, once the soils are fertilized, uh, they have uh, there are is a good percentage of, of clay in the soils. They are able to hold nutrients and and become very productive. And as you can see, a lot of your southeastern forests are uh, um, grow on these ultasols. Uh, alpha sols are are very much more common in the kind of uh, central region of the United States and they're also very productive soils for agricultural and silvicultural use. Uh, they are very fertile. A lot of our deciduous uh, forest soils um, or deciduous forests are found in this in, in, uh, on top of these alpha sols and you have very well developed soil horizons um, whereas with the ulta sols you, you maybe only had a, a, you know, a small organic layer and a small uh, B or A layer here with the alpha sols, you have very distinct, uh, uh, this uh, very distinct soil profile. Oxisols are found primarily in the tropics. Most of your soils uh, in the Amazon rainforest and then in Central Africa, and those rainforests are are found on top of oxisols, which are also very highly weathered. These are your tropical rainforest soils, which have uh, very little fertility, um, and they're in f in the soils themselves are actually for, uh, infertile because most of the nutrients are tied up in the canopy. So uh, a problem with major deforestation or harvesting in, in tropical forest is that the nutrients um, are actually removed after or removed or volatilized due to forest <laughs> due to you know ensuing fires after after forest clearing, uh, and that those nutrients don't get a chance to return. Um, a lot of your sugar cane soils. Uh, or sugarcane happens to be one of the crops that can be productive in in uh, in oxisols um, once they are uh, fertilized. And finally, spodosols are uh, are the very light colored acidic soils that support uh, conifer forests in the uh, southeastern United States. A lot of the longleaf and slash pine that you find in uh, in Florida and southeastern Georgia and uh, the other uh, spruce pine forests in, in Maine and northern Michigan and Wisconsin uh, are found on top of these spoda soils. They're very common in the coastal plain areas. Um, you do see uh, um, uh, a very weathered layer, um, a subsurface accumulation of, of humus. You have the, a very moist environment and the organic material um, begins to decompose but the uh, but the acidity kind of maintain keeps the uh, keeps decomposition from occurring so rapidly uh, and uh, 
from the organic material. Uh, it keeps the organic material from from weathering in the uh, other layers, so you end up with kind of a thick uh, humus layer on to on top. So those are the four major soil types: ultisols, alpha sols, photosols, and oxisols.